All right, back down here in the basement working on the plane today. I hope to get a lot done. I'd like to get uh, everything done on the rudder to where I'm up to the point where I'm about to prime. So uh, what that means is deburring all the holes in the skin that have been final drilled to the skeleton, taking the skeleton apart, deburring all of those holes as well, dimpling uh, everything in the skins and the skeleton. First step, though, is to put a slight bend in the edge of the, the trailing edge of each skin. And you do that because where the skins are riveted to the trailing edge wedge, uh, where the rivet goes through, it, it'll tend to make the skin flare out, so you want to you wanna put a slight bend to counteract that so you get a nice edge on the trailing edge, um, a nice point. So I'm going to use this tool here for that. It's these bearings with a, you know, a slight conical shape to it right there, uh, welded to the end of a pair of ice grips. And I've used this before when I did the, uh, the practice kit up there. Worked, worked fine, nothing to it. You, you, know, you adjust it and get it kind of the right tension and just roll it along. So this is bigger, but it should be the same deal. So that's what I'm going to do first. So what I'm going to do here to get this set up is first thing I want to make sure I'm doing it in the right direction. I don't want the bin to go in the wrong way. So this is the top side or the, the outside of the skin. I want the bin to go this way. So that's that's the right way with the tool. To get this adjusted, I'm going to clamp it down. It's not touching, not really touching yet, and it's not inside not not far enough in to hit the bend in the bearing in the cone shape bring it down until it's just touching okay and then a little tiny bit more See what I get out of that. All right. Oh, ran over a thread from my carpet. Back up this end and off the other end. Okay, beautiful. Just barely, just barely see. So that worked out well. All right, so now that both of those are done, the next step is to take everything apart and deburr all the holes in the skeleton pieces and the skins and uh, get them ready for dimpling. And also to go over all the edges and just make sure everything's clean and deburred and, and uh, ready for final assembly when that time comes. So that takes a long time. Uh, I speed things up here and cut out a lot of pieces. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it could seem kind of tedious, I suppose, but it's also satisfying work because, you know, you're, you're making things look nice and getting it ready for final assembly. Okay, so I've completely disassembled everything. I've uh, deburred all the holes in the skins, the skeleton, uh, gone over the edges again, made sure that was all, those are all nice and deburred. Uh, the whole thing took me about three hours or so, but uh, so everything's looking good. 
I'm going to go ahead and start dimpling the skins now. I'll use a C-frame for the uh, holes on the insides of the skin where the uh, squeezer can't reach. Then I'll pull them back over here to the table and uh, pull out the squeezer, start dimpling the, uh, the edges of the skin and the stiffeners, the spar, the ribs, all that, and uh, get all that taken care of. I actually bought some uh, subframe dimple dies, so I'll probably go ahead and try those. They have a slightly different angle than the, the uh, dimple dies for the skins. So I'll give those a shot, and um, yeah, that's next. All right, so I'm going to start banging some dimples in the skin here. Um, I've double-checked the plants to make sure I'm not about to dimple something I shouldn't dimple. Uh, it should be pretty straightforward. Everywhere there's a, a rib or stiffener, uh, the trailing edge, obviously, and the spar. Uh, those are the ones I was sort of double-checking because, you know, making sure there's not anywhere that's supposed to take a, a screw instead of a, a um, rivet. But I don't see anything strange, so uh, I'm going to go ahead. All right, so that's it for the C-frame. Uh, that's all I should need the C-frame for, for the rudder. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go get to work with the squeezer. So I've got the squeezer set up here. Got the squeezer set up with the foot pedal and the dimple die. Got the skin inside down now because I've got the male die in the top part of the yoke so that the dimple will go down through this way and I wish I had a taller table but this will work so there we go just gonna hold that down and That is one skin completely dimpled. Out for the other side. All right, so I've dimpled uh, the skins. Now I'm about to dimple the skeleton. For that I'm going to use the substructure dies which uh, look pretty much like the skin dimpling dies. The difference is they're, they're at a slightly different angle and that's to accept a dimple instead of the head of the rivet. Uh, not everyone uses these. I got some just because I thought I'd try them out. Another advantage, uh, so this looks just like uh, just like the regular skin dimpling die uh, again, it's at a slightly different angle, but you not enough to tell with your eye. Um, the female part of the die, though, this is the normal die, uh, female skin dimpling die. This is the female substructure die. As you can see, it's a slightly smaller diameter. That's the other reason I went ahead and bought these dies, because uh, it should be easier to get in some of these flanges. This will hit against the web of a, of a part sometimes. It worked fine, you know, I didn't have any real huge problems with the vertical stabilizer, but again, I thought, well, might as well uh, give these a try. I don't remember how expensive they were, but not that much. Uh, so anyway, going to give these a shot and dimple all that stuff.
Okay, uh, that's the counterbalance rib. Took no time at all. Looks like a dimpled rib. I'm going to see how these line up with the skin. All right, well, I can't honestly say uh, that I can tell a difference between these and just using a regular skin die on there. Maybe, maybe I can. Maybe it fit a little easier on the dimples of the skin, but uh, it certainly wasn't any worse. So, and it, it was a little nicer to have that 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 uh, smaller diameter female die. So, good deal. Okay, well, it's been a pretty long day. Uh, that was uh, all of step 11, all that dimpling. So I've got everything on the skeleton dimpled now and the skins. So pretty much the last step before I can prime and start riveting is to countersink that trailing edge wedge. So uh, that's a job for tomorrow, uh, but making good progress.